This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> okay, well, this is Joe from Ontario, right? Ontario, yeah. Canada. So yeah. and we met on Twitter. I first saw her on a video with a kind of a mutual acquaintance friend of ours, Herb, that is not even on Twitter anymore, I don't think. But um, he, came he came back? He's back. <laughs> oh, okay, Herb. Um, <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Um, so anyway, I saw Joe on his show a couple years ago, maybe. And then I looked her up and then found her on Twitter and loved her energy. And a lot of times if I'm having a bad day, like she'll chime in and say, you're so beautiful or whatever, or you're, you're such a great cook or you inspire me or what, you know, just something that'll make me go, I'm all right. You know, I'm all right. <laughs> and I hope I do the same thing for you. Cause sometimes I'll just kind of notice like, you're like kind of in on it, having a day on day. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. You know, oh, you absolutely do. Just seeing your message pop up, I'm like, oh, that's the energy that I need. It's just like we, I always tell you, you have this beautiful energy and calming. So I'm glad we met. Thank you, Herb. <laughs> do you like to go by Joe or Juliana or? Oh, um, my name is Julian. Well, it's Juliana. 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 Okay. Yeah. But you can call me Joe. I find it a lot easier. So okay. anything right. you feel. Yeah. Well, I'm from, you know, the deep south. So it's like Joliana, <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's, I'll call you Joe. I love that. I like your accent. <laughs> oh, wow. gosh. So um, anyway, we, we didn't even know what we were going to really talk about it or anything. I really just wanted everybody to meet you and me to really get to really meet you too. And um, I love, let me see if I can find it um, on your, on your Twitter uh, mm -hmm. um yeah so in your bio you say you're a camper nature mommy magic is all around you if you know how to look yes what does that mean well, <laughs> my opinion that this whole world is magic it goes from nature to the animals to every little thing even us humans are honestly magic because I dive into a lot. I'm a curious person. So I read on everything. So one of the things I read was that humans existence on this planet is, is a mystery. How are we surviving? How are we here? So even our own existence is magical. And then when we start seeing like the squirrels interacting with the trees and the other animals, and you start noticing that everything around us is magic. And even as small as someone doing any beautiful kinds like actions sorry act of kindness and that is magic in itself because it's creating that ripple effect that's gonna go on so even if it's, it's a small action it becomes this magic hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I love that word ripple even just the ripple effect that used to be one of my favorite yeah. songs. Oh, who used to sing it? Natasha Bedingfield was, um, um, she would say, yeah. one of her songs was like, drop me in the middle so I can make a ripple effect. Have you ever heard that? It's a good No, but I really love her. She's uh -huh. one of my favorite singers, like Unwritten. That's yes, a beautiful I love song. that song. Yep. Yeah. Um, lots of her songs I really love. I went through a phase where it seems like I just listened to nothing but her for a while. Um, yeah. But that one, that ripple, like that, that song just always got me and like drop me in the middle, and, you know, yeah. like in the middle of a I'm going to listen to that right after this. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge song <laughs> fan, so definitely going to listen. Yeah, this is a good positive um, song. Um, but yeah, yeah and like you were saying about the animals, it is so true. I think yesterday I shared another video just like around happy hour time. I, I tend to like forget and like <laughs> just carry my phone around and video myself out in the yard or whatever and then I end up just posting it without thinking but I I shared a video yesterday on YouTube that was just me like um putting like flowers and rose petals of, that I had in the house that you know arrangement that was going bad and I took it out yeah. in, the, in the in my my animal cemetery that I have <laughs> and it, oh, yeah it's all like birds that I tried to rescue and then they didn't 
Yeah. And so I've made that is sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like decorating the graves. <laughs> um but it's the same, like it made me feel so good to do that. It makes me feel good. Like when I go in and out of my driveway and I can look over at my little cemetery, <laughs> some people are yeah. by it, you know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, no, that way something, but I think that's beautiful. You're giving them a final resting place, you know, and you're surrounding it by beauty. You see, that is magic. That's exactly yeah. what I mean. Yep. I think it is. So yeah. Yeah, even like its little coffin. <laughs> it was it was like a beautiful box and it had rose petals all inside of it around the birds and the, you know, and then I do ribbon and stuff. I mean, I guess some people would look at that as like she is so witchy or something, or she's crazy. But I'm like, no, I mean, I couldn't just throw the bird out in the in the trash, yeah. you know. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I love that actually. And people might think it's crazy, but it's giving them the same respect we give humans we right. give it to humans why shouldn't we pass that on to animals that we try to rescue that's right because um, yeah. over the course of the last I guess three years I've really been studying or really thinking about this energy thing and how we are all energy and we are all equally yeah. you know us humans aren't aren't above everything else no no and so <laughs> yeah I, I think it really matters dog but yeah. <laughs> and also on this magic thing, I, I know that you went to Sedona pretty recently this year. Sorry? I remember that you went to Sedona. Yes, I did. Oh my God. And let me tell you this place. It's like nothing I expected. I felt so small in this place and I didn't know that you can, I'm surrounded by green all the time. I'm from Canada. So one second, Shadow, down, sit down. I'm battling her because she wants to get love. <laughs> I love it. My dog's outside right now, but normally she'd be like right here with me too. And my cat, yeah. I think my cat just went to sleep. So I'm like, good. I've got like an hour. <laughs> she, she, opened the door. she managed between her and the cat. They find ways to get to me, but yeah. it's okay. Of course they but, do. But back to Sedona, it was beautiful. I went to visit my brother and then we went to the church that's on top I think it's a church I love sightseeing and you can feel the energy it's so peaceful and it's so calm in there you can feel how powerful it is and you just stand on top and see everything I loved it it's one of my favorite I experiences. would love it too I especially love doing things like that by myself you know, yeah I feel like um like nobody else is going to like want to stay in there as long as I as I want to stay in there and feel that yeah so yeah I do a lot of crazy things like that just on my own I'm like I'll take this pickle delivery over to Charleston and South Carolina and and I want to do it by myself I will go all the way like four hours there four hours back in a day and it'll feel like it didn't take me any time because (laughs) where most people would probably go and want to have like a good meal or something in Charleston (laughs) like and grits or something I'm like parking my car and going and looking at cemeteries. <laughs> like, it's like, something is calling you in there. I don't know. because This little talk is like something needs your energy in there. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, favorite. I love a good cemetery. Love them. <laughs> <laughs> I would do that. I actually would do that. I've done the driving. I think we're the same person basically. Yeah, what you do, I do, and I find it fun. Like, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you get in the car and just explore? Because then you go so much, you see everything that you otherwise would miss. And I like to put on my GPS, I'll say no highways. Yeah, like thirty minutes more, but it's so worth it to go. You know, really see these towns and in the countryside instead of just the billboards on the on the big highway so yeah yeah, I do that a lot so my son lives about hour and a half two hours from here well it's two hours for me like an hour and a half for him because I always pick no (laughs) highways yeah it's beautiful I so why is it taking two hours why because I like to, plus I don't like getting on those loop-de-loops and exits everywhere. And, you know, we have a area in Atlanta called Spaghetti Junction. I mean, I'm like, no, <laughs> it's too many. 
<laughs> goes, you know, noodling around. I'm like, no, mm. I will, I will miss my exit, and you know, uh, uh-uh. uh. So I just good for you. Yep, I just good go for you because you don't want to see, like you said, those billboards. All ad after ad after ad, building after building, business after business. I, yep. you do the right thing. Because it's all about what we're being programmed. So like, what are you focusing on? What are you, you know, and I'm like, I'm not, not, uh, I'm not, you know, my, my husband does all these like Atlanta drives. Like he, he went yesterday, had to go pick up our jar order for our pickle business. And he saw, it's always about the traffic. It's like, was the traffic good? Or was there a wreck? Or like, how long were you on standstill? Like, you know, with the car not moving, you know? And I'm like, that never happens to me because <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know so crazy thought just came to me now it's like they're being controlled of the traffic and their way of going on about their route while you're taking control of your route and you're like yeah I'm gonna choose the beautiful route and avoid the chaos in a way it's kind of like poetic <laughs> yeah it is I've never really thought about it I mainly like I always thought I was just afraid to drive in heavy traffic but yeah now I see it as like even like my my first job interview whenever I was 16 I drove I lived way out in the country and I drove into town and I was interviewing at a bank and instead of driving to that bank I was terrified of driving like on the one-way streets when I was 16 I was afraid to get on town and drive you know like I was like I don't so I parked like a mile away yeah, and walked. I must have looked like a prostitute walking down, like down through, the, <laughs> through like this area of town that's known for it. Because I was wearing like my heels and little dress, you know, like because I was going to a job interview. And yeah, yeah, like I found out later. I did get the job, but I found out later that yeah, that's like prostitute road. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, we do all what we have to do. <laughs> but now you know. If you didn't walk, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah crazy uh-huh. I think life is beautiful though like everything every little choice we make like that yeah. it's lesson or a blessing and it just yeah and it makes for a good story too just good story like I you know my daughter now like she's 16 and I could I tell her these stories I'm like can you believe your mom parked here and <laughs> she can already like she drives everywhere she's like mom, yeah you know like what <laughs> Where are you at? You're so right. Like, think about it. There are people that wake up and complain about, oh, traffic, just like you said, traffic this, traffic that. And then there are people with stories. Yeah. This is what happened because I did this and this is what happened. This, I love those stories and they should be shared more. I really, yeah. a lot of times, don't even feel like I live in the matrix at all. I feel like I am in a parallel place because I'm like, really? I don't see things the same way. That yeah, somebody, somebody right there in the car with me will see yeah. completely differently from what I see. Like, oh, it's the perfect way to describe it, actually. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel too. And a lot of people, you read them like on Twitter, they say, "I'm getting out of the matrix. I'm getting out of the matrix." And like the way that they mean it is a bit different, but the true meaning of it is exactly what you're saying and how you're experiencing it. In my opinion, again, nothing is true that I say. Nothing is true. Nothing is fact. It's just my opinion that it is. Yeah, this is what it is to get out of the matrix. Yes, you're part of it and you're in it, but you have this whole different experience. And you're like, okay, well. <laughs> but even like in religion, they say, you know, like be in the world, but not of it. So I guess that's the same thing. Like I'm in yeah. it, but not of it. You know, I'm yeah. out of this world, y'all. <laughs> We're out of this yeah. world. Joe and Angie are out of this world. <laughs> yes. And Religion tells you the truth. Like there's a lot of truth in every religion that you see. Yeah. Every little thing you take it and you put it in practice and you're like, you're right. Like yeah. it's about a different perspective. Oh, totally. Well, about yeah. boundaries, we were we were mentioning before that we might want to talk about boundaries. This is kind of the same thing though. Because I yeah. know, I'm trying to think of who, who I, I'm reading a book. Oh, I think it is her book. I think... Asia Suler, have you heard of this woman, this girl? No. Oh, so beautiful. This book no. is called Mirrors in the Earth. I just got it, so I haven't even like dove into it, but I used to watch some of her YouTubes. Yeah. And I remember when we were talking about Mirrors in the Earth. 
okay yep. thank you <laughs> yes mirrors <laughs> like um and she yeah. uh I think in one of her videos she talks about like a tree will grow best where it's put in good soil it's given yeah. the proper nourishment the sunlight the you know everything's got to be just right and it's the same way with us in our homes like I'm looking around right now and there's clutter everywhere like yeah <laughs> no I'm like all you see is this but there's clutter there's laundry piled up on top of an ironing board there's like stuff everywhere and I'm like it doesn't feel good like I just want to close the door and leave this room and you know yeah put my pajamas back on and you know I don't want to I don't want to deal with it I can barely lift my feet to vacuum the floor you know just like yeah um but it's so true and she talks about that being boundaries like setting your boundaries even just in your in your home um and setting your boundaries with people like I might not be able to grow so great with this person (laughs) or you know you gotta you gotta get rid of you gotta purge some things and some some people too like we have to be very careful who we allow in our in our space so yeah yeah, I I want to be that pretty beautiful tree I want my life to be completely grounded you know I want to be rooted and you know and then when I'm ready I'll drop that fruit you know yeah so I completely agree boundaries are so important I didn't have boundaries before I was a people pleaser (laughs) right how did you feel like <clears throat> when people asked you things what was your experience before like you lacked the boundaries I, wasn't it horrible? yeah I said yes to everything I would uh, you know go out of my way for everyone and then I you know you find out they're they're not going to go out of their way for you I spent yeah. two years very sick um here just at home I had to you might remember that I had a store yeah yeah, I remember I reading on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I was very sick, and there were friends <laughs> who I've yeah. done a whole lot for over the years that live right down the road, and were too busy to you know just pop in on me or you know. And I remember one of them coming by, and I was like, <gasps> you know, and I like hugged her, and I started crying, and she just didn't even seem to get it. I'm like we're not the same. We're just not the same, you know? Yeah. yeah, People pleasing. And now I'm like, no, I don't think I'm going (laughs) to put that much energy into you anymore. And just today I told somebody, no. Oh my God. How did that go? (laughs) My daughter was like, yes, mom. Like she is like my biggest like mentor sometimes and she's 16, but she's like, hopefully you did not say yes. Yes. You know, you said no. I said, I said no I came up with an excuse but I still I got out of it you know like whatever it was the truth but it's hard it is hard to not try to please people but once yeah. we realized that we, we really were only supposed to work on ourselves, ourselves right mm-hmm. their own I was on so there yeah I honestly went through the exact same thing and I tried to make everyone happy because it's like what if they get mad or what if their feelings get hurt or what if they really really need it and then when I started just like you when I went through my dark times I noticed not a single person like except the people on Twitter I have some amazing people on Twitter who always reached out checked off on me but the, you know the people you surround yourself with they just weren't there and then I always gave my time and energy and like put myself in a stressful situations just to help them and it turns out that you know what no one's gonna care for you the way that you care for yourself so it is important to give yourself that that security that you're gonna take care of yourself and you're gonna love yourself and you're gonna give yourself that space and when I think of boundaries now I don't think of hurting other people the way that I see it is I'm putting a line around me, you know, like yes, this is the line. Your, your, yeah. You're like you can come exactly. You can come close to me, but these are my lines, you know, and don't cross them because if you cross them, then there will be consequences because then you're making me uncomfortable yes. so that you are comfortable, which doesn't make sense. 
you know, so I had to learn the hard way. I got beat and beat and beat. And I'm like, okay, I get it, universe. You're telling me to respect myself more or other people won't respect me. I take care of myself. Other people won't take care of me. And then, you know, it switches. Like once you start respecting your time and your energy and your mental health and prioritizing that, you'll start seeing everyone else around you do the same thing. Yeah. They'll be like, oh no, you know what? Juliana's busy today. Let's not bother her. We'll just ask her when she has like the time to help us. Or you know what? she might not be comfortable like you said you know what we're gonna talk but stay away from politics yeah. politics is a boundary for me you i do not want to talk about politics i want to stay away from politics and if you put me in a position to talk about politics the consequence is that i'm staying away from you you know what if, when you asked me on twitter in the direct message what if what if when you said what are we going to talk about what, what, what if i said <laughs> politics <laughs> <laughs> And honestly, I found respectful ways to say no. So I'd be like, oh, that is a wonderful topic. However, that's not a topic I'd be comfortable discussing. There is person A, person B, and person C who are very good at this. And you can talk to them about this. I am not one person to discuss oh. this. So yeah, I find ways to get myself out. But it has to be like a kind way. So I'm yeah. not hurting anyone. <laughs> I won't be like, oh, my God, like, oh, ew, don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm <not> that. <laughs> yeah, I really think everyone should start practicing boundaries. It's an act of self-love, right? It is. Yeah. I'm just figuring that out. I mean, and I'm I'm older. <laughs> like it like, took me a while on all this. Yeah. I think the new generation is just speeding up. You said your 16-year-old daughter is yes. your mentor. Yes teaching us a lot more I have a six-year-old who teaches me so much and I'm like child you are smart and you're on to something you know I think the new generation has something I've heard of this too like that they are that this generation was born kind of already at a yeah. higher dimension possibly or then than me than, than I was you know and so I'm having to work harder to get there or, you know I strongly not, believe that. not as programmed as I would mm -hmm. you know as I am so you know to, yeah, yeah. So, um, well we grew up with like everyone telling us everything is a shame everything is embarrassing you have to do this you have to do this this is the standard a, a woman has to do this and this and a man has to do this so we we had messed up standards and we started self-doubting ourselves and we wanted to go by the book however our hearts deep inside kept telling us no that's how I see it is that yeah. our hearts kept like conflicting with what we've been taught until we broke it which happened to be when we're older because we don't have those influences anymore such as mom and dad or the teachers or everyone who's older than us telling us this is the way then we started following our hearts yeah. And then in a way we broke that and we allowed the new generation to thrive off that. So yeah, I strongly believe they are at a higher consciousness. We just had to struggle to get there. Yes. It's been a yeah. struggle. And then my <laughs> people around me that 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 now they're like, what is going on with Angie? She's different. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, thank goodness, like I'm not trapped anymore or you know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know, I've always been sort of a rebel. Yeah, yeah. I, it. I, mean, just, I love the word resonates because anything now that like resonates, I'm like, that's true. Like that's yeah. True. So, and, well, and also a lot of times, like my gut feeling, like it doesn't make sense. So that means it's true, <laughs> you know, because yeah. things that make sense means that's stuff that we just learned all our lives. But um, yeah, what doesn't make sense is a lot of times the truth it actually is it's i'm trying to think back of like what are some things that didn't make sense but in a way they do like i don't understand doctors but what they say makes sense yes. like cool yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not true <laughs> you to go out in, the, in my in the woods out here i've got moline growing wild it cures lung infections um I, you know there's so much in nature that yeah no what I'm saying is like he let's say I broke my leg and then he'll be like 
this and this and this and this is what you have to do and we have right. to put a bolt in the bone and I'd be like I don't know how to pin in a bone can fix it but you do you you do you, you see, yeah. <laughs> It's mm-hmm. just example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you're. I see what you're saying. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, I also saw which I was just really intrigued by this. This journal, this leather book that you posted. Yes. 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 Um, have you decided what you're going to do with it? I did. So I read. I was going to make a post about it, but might as well say it here, and then I'm still going to tweet about it later because I know people are excited to know. Um, so initially I wanted to put something beautiful and meaningful in there because it's a huge book. Like, Oh really? Okay. I couldn't tell in the, in, on Twitter. Yeah. I just, it was on my bed and I was recording it while standing, but it's half of my size. So I'm five one and it's half of my size and the papers are made, um, handmade. So I need to be careful into what I put into it. And I read a lot of what other people were saying. Some suggested rituals, some suggested um, some stories or life journal and drawings. So I was like, I'm going to put everything that is meaningful, you know, things that we find to be meaningful and that we discuss every single day, put it into like an article or let's say put it into a piece and put it in there, just like back in the day, any wisdom that is meaningful Yes. Would go in there, in my opinion. So, like, let's say we discuss boundaries, and then I write boundaries. Something about boundaries yeah. is just so to pass on to my future generations, so they know yeah. that boundaries are healthy. Like, even if it's a lost thing, by the time they get to it, these things right. are important. Then I can put rituals, such as there's a lot of rituals. I haven't opened up too much. That's one of the boundaries that I placed once things started happening on Twitter. I don't know if you noticed how wild things got. So I just put um, boundaries in there. And I'm like, I'm not sharing anything yet because it feels like not everyone's ready to receive it. So I'll put in the rituals. Also, if I find an art piece or I find an artist who's amazing, I'd be like, do you mind filling a page of your art and then put your name on it? Because I think this deserves to be shown to future generations. I love um, this idea. I have a similar, it's not, it's not a beautiful book. It's just a, you know, just a journal I picked up at the bookstore years ago. And I just, I've been writing in it all these years for my daughter, for my yeah. oldest daughter. I need to do the same thing for my youngest. Of course, she could just write one for me because she's my mentor. So like, but, <laughs> uh, I have, you know, I have a 24 year old also. So, uh, yeah. so um, yeah, but keep going. I love, I love this idea. Yeah, I thought like even things, the stories that we come up with, like it's pure to do this, do everything with pure intentions. Maybe a page is going to be just pure quotes of wisdom that needs to be passed on. And anything I find that is beautiful and meaningful along the way, whether it's by me or other people, I'll just make sure to have them write their names and information and be like, so that way in the future, you never know you know they'll yeah. come across an art piece and be like this is beautiful and this was the artist I don't do art but yeah <laughs> at least it's kind of like a community mm-hmm. thing that I love cool. that when my daughter graduated high school she didn't go to the typical high school it was a, a different sort of high school they didn't have a yearbook or anything no. and so she was moving to um Asheville North Carolina to go to yeah. school and she loved the mountains and hiking and all those outdoorsy things. So I found a beautiful book about all that. And so I had all these people that meant something to her and they came into my store, I had the book, it was like a surprise for her. And they all came in and just picked a page in the book because it was just beautiful, you know, pictures and, and they it had a lot of free space too. So in the book, they just, you know, they would write something to her and some people drew pictures and it was, I think it was better than having a yearbook. Like she's like, oh, yeah. days, you know, all the pictures are on snap anyway <laughs> so, yeah. with these kids. So like, this is way more special to have, like, cause it wasn't just like high school friends, it was high school friends, plus all these other people who were around her 
in that left turn. That is beautiful, yeah. So much better than a yearbook because at yeah. least when you open the book, you get to see nature and not oh. pictures of kids. <laughs> Like you, know, that's that's how ugly I was. <laughs> like you that's how ugly I was back in the day that's what that's all I do with my yearbook like no I, know. I had the worst <laughs> hair I really had bad bad hair oh but uh yeah so that's share kind of book thing. do what share yeah. your book pictures on Twitter <laughs> maybe I'll do it on this video maybe I'll, I'll like put it <laughs> I'll find mine and hopefully I have it and send it to you. No one wants to see that. But yeah. That. Well, I, I've enjoyed this. I don't want to keep you too long. I just really wanted our first video just to be kind of a, like an introduction and just kind of, you know, share our energies together. And you said she's your niece. Yeah. So this is Ashtar is her name, you know, like the goddess Ashtar. Yeah. So this is oh, Ashtar. Oh, what a cool name. It fits right? you. It fits you very well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Say hi, Atu. Oh, oh. she's... <laughs> yeah, last minute, my sister, because um, she had an, a baby six months, like she, premature baby. So she has to go to the sick kids hospital to take care of him. So I take her and watch her. She just called me last minute today. She's like, can you watch her? I'm like... Of course, it's like I'm not gonna yeah. say no. She's such a sweetheart. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'll be thinking about your sister too. That's a lot. Thank you. Yeah. First of all, she's she's doing good though. And you know what? She named her baby Elil. Elil. You know the god Elil. I do. <laughs> so she named him Elil, and we're like, no, this is like I know some people. It bothers me when the, um some people say, oh. It, it happens for a reason, you know, because sometimes the suffering just doesn't need to happen. But then uh -huh. for this one child, we truly feel it. Like his name meaning is the God of um, air, the God of creation, the God of so much. So we're like, maybe this is him doing this for himself. So that way he's, he battles it and he's strong. You know, we have faith. He's such a good boy though. He's I totally growing. I get all that. I, I do. Like, it just gives me chills because I do believe that we all, like, I, I believe names are very important. Yeah. They really very. are. Very. Mm -hmm. They influence your life. I was just talking to my sister about this yesterday. I'm like, names influence people's lives. And someone whose name meaning is a man down with their luck will always be down on their luck or as hard as they try, they will still have that effect in their life. If you name your child something powerful, Hello. they will always have that powerful Hello. path. Yes. Just the way that I see it. Yeah. My grandmother chose my name, Angela, and she said, because it means heavenly messenger. And so whenever I was a child, I always, I always loved that. You know, it's like, I'm an angel. <laughs> You know, it now that you explain the meaning, it's perfectly fit for you. It really is because I always see you and I see like this bright angel sign, like just an angel that's right. Wow. Your so good. Yeah, your energy is so good. So your grandma did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. named my oldest after her, and then my youngest is named after my my other grandmother, my biological grandmother, who died when my dad was a baby. So, yeah, and she's oh. the one people see her around me all the time. So. Oh, she's protecting you. Huh? She's the she's one watching. like people that I don't even know just that are seers that can see these things will tell yeah. me they're like, does the name Margaret mean anything to you? And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> they're like, well, she's right there. Like, oh my God. I believe that. You see, it sends chills like to me too. <laughs> yes. I love I don't it but I love hearing that mm -hmm. um yeah when once um my oldest daughter when she was 14 she had she had this little like growth not really growth but like a little fat pocket on her inner thigh that she was born yeah. with it's the cutest little thing when she was a baby we just loved to pinch it and be like oh it's so cute and she was 14 years old she was like I hate this thing you know like and I said well you know 
you get older, if you, if you still hate it that much, we'll just have it like sucked out, you know, like get rid of it. And so my husband said something like, why are you so vain? Like, it doesn't really, like, doesn't really matter. Well, that word, I mean, she started just bawling her eyes out. Like, like he had, you know, really attacked her and, yeah. and, and he went on to bed. He was like, goodness gracious, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, so we started having this talk together, me and my daughter. I said, you know, whenever I was 14, I went to go yeah. visit my great grandmother who I was very, very close to. And she had moved out to Oregon to live with one of, she had three daughters and one of them was the one that was killed, which was my biological grandmother, Margaret. Yeah. And then I was, my dad was adopted by Margaret's sister. So we were still all in the family, you know? And so, so I went out um, with my family to go visit my great grandmother um, at her, another one of her daughter's houses. And I was so excited to see her. We get to the house. I go straight upstairs. She was in a bed and I'm like, Hey, she said to me, get my name's Angie. <laughs> she yeah. said, get out of here, yeah. Margaret, you vain woman. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So I was telling my daughter this story. I was like, the word vain really just whoo, triggers us. I mean, I'm just getting chills again. Yeah. Because, you know, because Margaret's probably just right here with me right now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that has stuck with me my whole life. So while I was telling this story to my daughter, I was standing in the kitchen in front of the kitchen. Yeah. Sink. She said, mom, are you okay? And I said, yeah, why? I feel kind of crazy. She goes, you, there's this light above your head. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, you know, I feel like I'm about six inches off the floor. I could feel like an energy between me and the floor. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yes, names are very important. Um, my youngest daughter's name is Margaret Rose. And yeah. so when she was um, about four years old, a lady that was telling me that she could see Margaret next to me, well, Rosie comes, we call her Rosie, Rosie comes yeah. running up to me, we're at the beach, I mean, this is a woman I just met for the first time, we're talking about pickles, like it wasn't yeah. you know, anything, we're having a, we're at the tiki bar, you know, yeah. and she goes, wait, wait, she's around her too, wait, that is Margaret, that's what she said. <laughs> and I don't know what that means but I'm like sometimes we go well maybe I mean I don't know because I do believe in reincarnation so I don't I don't know but um I don't know. You never know I do believe in reincarnation and you it might be Margaret and you said that you're she's a mentor and she's wise yes all souls yes. they do come back yes. I'm a strong believer in that Yes. And she is so like, Ooh, had a really hard time with my dad growing up. She has a hard time with her dad. Oh. She's not taking it. Whereas yeah, like it affected me my whole life. Like she's like so strong. Like she will just tell him. Whereas I, yes. Yeah. I know this is like very personal. I guess I've been getting personal in here. I don't care. It's the truth. <laughs> but, <Yeah. you> know, <laughs> but she just, I look, look at her and I'm like, oh gosh, that's going to be this. Oh, I can't believe you just said that. You know, like, like this is going to make it really bad energy in our house, you know, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, my mom went along with everything that my dad did growing up. Yeah. You know? And, it, you know, and so big lesson, like, no, yeah. she can say, you know, that whole honor thy father and thy mother thing I don't think it's about our those parents I think it's about father mother God so yeah. <laughs> well, what I think because some parents are just yeah you know, like just because they're your parents you're supposed to honor them what no, like, oh. <laughs> no yeah. I've heard so many stories of parents that shouldn't even be parents and what they yeah. do like I saw a video of like these parents recently which they give their kid um, an eviction notice on his 18th birthday. And I'm like, yeah, some parents just should not be parents. Like, though, like how are you going to uh, honor those people who are basically taking you? And they're like, we know inflation is bad. We know the world is not a good place to be in on your own. We know the hardships of everything. 
but we're still going to throw you out there to the sharks. You know, it's like, yeah. What are you going to honor about that? You know, like, okay, you taught me life lessons that even my own parents are not going to be there for me. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Same. So no, don't honor your parents, honor whoever you want to honor, good people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, I guess they took that take no shit to a next level, the yes. new generation. <laughs> yeah, they did. I mean, at least my daughter did. She's like, uh -uh. like, no. And that's like, you know, me even saying no to this person who asked me to do a favor for them this morning. And then I was like, no. <laughs> she said, yes, mom. Finally. <laughs> Thanks, no Good. I'm glad she's there to remind you because you seem like such a nice person. You need to sometimes take lessons from her and just yeah. be mean. Yeah. Sometimes being mean to others is being nice to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like the in-between, you know, because I have a six-year-old who's just a savage. He tells me, like, Adrian, let's put your shoes on. No, I need to finish this game one second. Okay, <laughs> Adrian, are you ready to do your homework? No, I'm just going to go wash my hands and then come back and then sit down, relax for five minutes, and we'll do homework. And I'm like, if I said this to my mom back in the day, I don't think I'd make it. Yes, <laughs> I wouldn't make it till today. But I love it. It's good. They need that. Yeah, I know. You know, that's. I mean, that's. They they were born different than us. I yeah. mean, and I I really believe that. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Yeah. Right. I think the only thing I wrote down on my little notepad was our boundaries are. They are our true home. So yeah. like, you know, if we put the boundaries around then we, we make that home. So yeah, kind of, kind of like that tree I was talking about with Asia, Asia Suler was talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. You but like just her. like I said, it's the light, um, the lines around us and you saying it's like a home, it's perfect because it's just like the lines, the borders of the home and then you protect yourself. Well, yeah. thank you for coming into my home today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so yeah. great. Do this again. It's good therapy for me. It's very good yeah. therapy for me to do this. Um, it's like a really good, like long, like phone call with a good friend because um, I, and I totally believe that even though this is a screen right here, that, that your energy is coming. Yes. Through. I totally yeah. It goes beyond physical for sure. Yes. I'm in your home right now, literally looking at your home and you're looking into like one of my most private spaces, my bedroom. Yes. So it is. Yes. yes. Thank you. I really appreciate yeah. you. Well, I love you. I've always, I've wanted to do this with you for a while. So I'm just lining up different people right now that I really love and just kind of talking and we'll see how it goes, but I kind of want to do like a regular thing and I want it to always be inspiring and not anything negative, no politics, you know, just. Yes. I'm always down. You let me know. And okay. We, you know, I would always love to come back. All right, I'm gonna I love being recording. invited. I don't like setting it up because I get nervous. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll um I'll quit recording now. Um okay. and then we'll just talk for a second. But anyway, bye everyone. Bye. bye Let me see if I can figure it out. I'm terrible at this. And